Good morning, campers. It's 5 a.m. and I'm, yeah, I'm trying to wake up. You guys can hear it. My little voice here got kind of a froggy still there, but it's 5 a.m. Welcome to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Eric, your host. We're bringing you all the tech all the time. So what's on our tech plate today? Well, today we're going to be feasting and taking a look at the brand new card from the people from NVIDIA. That's right. Big Green is back with another launch. This launch is for the mid-range market. The car we're going to be talking about today is their new GTX 650 Ti Boost Edition card. Now, what's different than this than the standard edition 650 Ti card? One of the biggest changes is actually the memory interface and the amount of RAM that comes on the standard card. So with that said, let's actually jump in and let's check out the latest card from Big Green. Now let's actually take a look at the aesthetics of the card. Now take into mind that the card that we're looking at today is the reference based model, but let's go ahead and jump in. First off, let's take a measuring. We can see that the card sizes in at nine and a half inches. Nice little lazy pleaser there. See that the card is one and a half inches in its thickness. And as far as the height of the card goes, the card is three and a half inches in height. So those are the dimensions of the card. You guys can see it has a single black shroud, single blower type fan connection. Now let's go ahead and let's take a look at the side of the card. You guys can see it's a two slot configuration. On the bottom, we see the PCI 3.0 interface. You can see that on this card, there is an SLI interface up here on top, and this card will actually do SLI. This is a difference between its previous generation card, which we'll get to later. We also see a single six pin power connection here. On the back of the card, you can see it has a black PCB and there's actually a little bit more room on the card than actually you see. The length of the card is actually being determined by the shroud and the fan. The actual uh, PCB of the card is much smaller. The actual PCB of the card without that shroud could be seven inches. Now let's flip it around and let's take a look at the rear IO. On the rear IO, we see a single link DVI connector on top, dual link DVI on the bottom, standard HDMI and standard DisplayPort connections. Okay, folks, so I know that a lot of people are going to want to know the comparisons between this and the previous generation 650 Ti. Now, I want you guys to take note of what we're going to show you here. In these next shots, I'll be showing you this reference-based card against the original reference-based GTX 650 Ti. And I'll also be showing you the two gigabyte version from Gigabyte, which is a lot of ways similar to this card other than the memory interface. So let's jump in and let's check out those. The reference card we're looking at right now is the 650 Ti Boots. It's the GK106. It has 768 CUDA cores, a base clock of 980 megahertz, and a boost clock of 1033 megahertz. Comes with two gigabytes of GDR5 with 192 bit memory interface. The memory clock is 6 gigahertz and it has 142.2 gigabytes of total memory bandwidth. And this card can also do SLI. Now let's take a look now at the Gigabyte 650Ti 2 gigabyte. Now this card also has 768 CUDA cores, but it has a base clock of 1032 megahertz. Now there's no boost on this at all, but the base clock is pretty much getting really close to what the boost clock is of the new card. The Gigabyte version also comes with 2 gigabytes of GDR5 memory and it has a 128-bit memory interface with a memory clock of 5.4 gigahertz, 86.4 gigabytes of total memory bandwidth, no SLI. Now, on the reference card that I originally got from NVIDIA, it was a 1 gigabyte edition. That was just the GTX 650 Ti 1 gigabyte. It still had 768 CUDA cores, but it had a base clock of 925 megahertz and no boost. It also had one gigabyte of GDDR5 with 128-bit memory interface. Its memory clock and total effective memory bandwidth though are exactly the same as the gigabyte 2 gigabyte card. Now all of these cards feature adaptive VSync, TXAA, they all have PhysX. And another really cool thing that's rolled out is the new GeForce Experience. If you guys haven't tried this out, you should check it out. Basically, you download this program and it keeps all of your drivers and everything up to date on your computer. So that's pretty cool stuff. You install it and instead of having to go search, it tells you, hey, a new driver's there, man. Come check it out. And so you go grab it, install it. Easy money and easy to do. So what you guys can see is the biggest difference here between the new 650 Ti Boost and the 650 Ti are just a few things. 
On the new card, we see a 192-bit memory interface. On all of the older cards, we see a 128-bit memory interface. Now, this makes a big difference. The memory balance is much higher, which means you're going to get a lot better results. Also, having a 2-gigabyte card is going to be much faster and much better with all the textures and everything up than a 1-gigabyte card. So with that said, let's jump into testing. Like usual, folks, I'm still using my red DOM back here. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll explain some more about it. It's on the SRX by EVGA. It's got two E5 2660 CPUs running at 2.2 gigahertz. No, they don't bottleneck these cards. 80 gigabytes of RAM from the people over at Patriot. Thanks, Scott. Peace, bro. Also, David Kingston. Peace, brother. Thank you very much for the dual 480 gigabyte drives that I have back there in RAID 0. Those are HyperX versions. They're really nice. So, I know it's kind of overkill, and I use the system for both workstation stuff for editing and for gaming, and it works pretty good. So, with that said, let's rock out to the new benchmark song and check out some scores. Okay, folks, so there you see it. The brand new card from the green team, the new GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost. Now, this card, obviously, if you're seeing all the scores and everything, you can see that this card in its class is pretty much the fastest thing out there right now. For this price range, you know, it's the winner right now. Now, the last week's result that we see with the 7790, they were, you know, pretty close, but I think the thing that really kills the 7790, though, is that it only has one gigabyte of memory. I just think that kills the card nowadays. One gigabyte's kind of like, eh, it's like, you know, at the very bottom of the heap. For mid-level card, I think two gigabytes is now that. Three gigabytes is for a better card. Six gigabytes for the ass kicker of the bunch at this moment in time. So you guys can see it. This card's going to be about $179. There'll be different models by different makers. Once again, this was the reference edition card from NVIDIA. You know, you know everybody out there is going to have their own cooling, their own special stuff. You'll see all the manufacturers with their own stuff saying, hey, check out mine. Mine's the best. You guys know what it is. I just worked out better for us as the end user. Now, we showed you guys half of the scores in this. We have the other half in the full written review. We kind of just skim things over in the video review. If you guys want the full in-depth review, please check it out on our website, www.techoftomorrow. You guys can see that right down here. So check out that link below me right there where you guys can also see a link to click right over and check out the video in this video. So that's it, folks. Hope you like this. Hit that like button. Show me that you appreciate it here. And hey, stay subbed. After all, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning to film this thing for you. See you later.